Okay, welcome to the kind of second part of making a game with Hacks, Hacks Flixel. In our last set of tutorials, we went through how to set up a Hacks Flixel project um, in two ways, one with Lix and one without Lix. Um, please make sure you've watched that before you watch this or this won't make any sense. So this is where we got up to in our last project. We could run a Hello World in the browser and make a few changes there. Um, since then, I have actually made some changes. So, if you haven't watched the video on a compilation server, please watch that first because I have gone ahead and updated my package JSON to have a script to run the compilation server. And I have updated my watcher sh file to connect to that compilation server. So, in my terminal, terminal I've got two servers running. So, one here is the compilation server. As you can see, it's running on port 6000. And here is the regular node kind of um, concurrency server. So it's got the, the server, which is the HTTP server, as well as the watchman watch. So that's running on this bit here. So that will have faster compile times. OK, let's go ahead and add a sprite to our code. First of all, get one from here. So this is the phaser website. I'm going to have a link to this inside the description. But if you go to this link, um, making your first phase of three game and download this zip over, over here. You can save it wherever you want. I have already done it, so let's do that. So this is the, zip, the unzipped uh, code or the unzipped project. Inside the assets, what I want you to do is, um, ah, this is annoying, I've already um, done that. Okay, let me just delete this bit here and let me actually download it again so you can see me do it. Okay, so now inside the um, desktop, I want to unzip this and go to the assets. What I want you to do is copy the dude and the platform into your project. So let's do that now. Um, I'm going to jump to my project, open up the assets, images, and then grab the dude platform and drag it into here. So there, inside that folder, we don't actually need this and we don't actually need this file. This is a helper file to help us reference um, assets. We don't need this. I find that referencing it absolutely is, is better than, than using it at all. Cool. So we've done that. Now let's create a file called player.hx, which will be our sprite. And what we're going to do is, as well as export it, we're going to um, create a class called player, and that will extend. Extend. Is that how you spell extend? Extends with an S. All right, extends. FLX sprite. That should have um, preloaded it, but it didn't. FLX. Sorry, it should have IntelliSense. Here we go. Sprite. There we go. This is exactly what I want. And I will import it for me automatically. Let's create a constructor. So that'll be a public new function. New, and that is going to. Um, taking two arguments, it will take x position, and which will be an int, and a y position for our sprite. And what we're going to do with that is do a super, which is going to take in our x and y position, and we're going to have some default parameters. Um, please don't worry if you don't understand what's going on. I'm going to do a lot of coding really quickly, and then explain afterwards. So please bear with me. Um, so I've put in some default parameters here. So if nothing's passed in to this constructor, um, it will do zero zero into here. We're going to have a um, load load graphic method, and this comes with the FLX sprite. So that's where that's where this comes from. We're going to get our assets, uh, images, and we're going to get dude. And I've already done this before, so I know the dimensions of dude. Um, if you've got VS Code IntelliSense on correctly, it should tell you what kind of things to pass in. So it's graphic animated and then it's the width and the height so this is going to be animated true and the width and the height are 32 48 of this image and what we're getting is as you can see there are multiple images of that same sprite and each one of these is um, 32 by 48 so I just want to show one and we'll animate it at some point but not in this video in, in the next one so we've got the, the graphic in there um, I think that's all we need for now here so I'm going to save that and this will um, build the game super quickly, of course. But 
if I then go and hard refresh my code, you'll see there's nothing in there because I haven't loaded up the sprites into this um, into this bit. So let's do that now. Into the play state, let's get rid of FLX text. So we do not need any text anymore. What we want to do now is import our player. So we're going to do final player, which will be a new player. Hopefully, if IntelliSense is working, it will automatically import our player. Um, why didn't it do that? Anyway, do that for. Oh, that's not what I want. Here we go. So it's got our player, our X position, and Y position. I'm not going to put anything in there for now. And then we're going to do add to our player. And what add does is adds whatever we add here into the state. So hopefully that should work. Let that build for a second and once that's done, go to the browser, hard refresh, which is of course command shift R. And then we don't have our sprites, so something went wrong there. Let's see what's going on. So here, assets, images, dude, ah, I forgot to do PNG. Okay, game is building. Let's go to the browser. Did it finish? Yeah, it did finish. Boom. And now we have the sprite in there. It's a bit tough to see because the whole thing's quite black, so let's change the background color. So it's easier for us to see, and that's very simple to do. Um, looking at my notes, just to remind myself, it is simply, so this FLX um, state here comes with a variable called BG color, which we can change um, to a OX, sorry, O is in the number, not the letter, X, F, F, and we're going to press C six times, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and that is a sort of gray color. Um, and to show you how I figure that out, um, if you go into inspect in your browser, so right click hit inspect, you will get the inspector tools here. And because I already code um, websites, this is quite useful to me. So the color, um, I'll pick any one for now, you can then click on this box here and you can see the kind of values you get when you move this around. So these are the values, these are the hexadecimal values, they're usually six letters and numbers, alphanumeric, and then you can change the um, the last two here, as you've seen, it popped up when I changed the opacity, right? So an opacity of, of 100 is FF, which is not showing at the moment. Um, but the color that I'm using is 6 Cs, so it's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's this sort of gray, right? So I've got this 6 Cs, and I've got F, two Fs, so gray, 100%. And that's this gray here. Hax has got it a bit differently. So gray is here, 100% is here, which is two Fs. Um, and to tell it, Hax is a hexadecimal. We've got this zero and x. So this is what you have for hex that's more color inside hacks. So now that's built. Once we um, let's get rid of this, let's get rid of that, let's hard refresh, and as you can see, we have this gray background, and now it's easier to see the sprite. So that's how simple it is to add a sprite inside hacks. Let's actually change the position to show you the fact that I can pass arguments into this and it will change the position of the sprite. Um, and once that is built, boom, maybe not. Cool. We can now hard refresh, and the sprite is now at a different position. There we go. So in our next video, I'm going to show you how to move the sprite with the arrows on the keyboard. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.